This is High School Not So Much a Musical, the podcast that takes you on a ride through the peaks and valleys of a high school journey. Here are your presenters, Nitin Jaladanki and Ayush Agarwal. That I learned is that uh, there's way too little automation in the world. That people, the uh, you know, factory owners, basically, whether it's SMEs or big corporates, they uh, they have too little knowledge about uh, how automation uh, can actually help them and how they can say how that can improve their profitability. Okay, I think that's a big learning. Another big learning is that uh, you can change an industry, you can make significant impact in an industry if you push hard enough and mm-hmm. if you if you really try. Mm-hmm. I guess that's that's sort of some of the big learnings from uh, from you are, but. The reason for moving from UR then to on robot is also because okay, another learning is that the robot itself does not create any value yeah. in the same way as a gripper on its own does mm-hmm. not create any value. It's the combination. It's when you put the different technologies together when you offer a complete solution to the end user, then you create value, mm-hmm. and that is sort of the. The jump going from you can say creating part of the value with universal robots to now okay. creating much bigger part of the value with the uh, with robots. Okay. So with the current geo geopolitical situation surrounding Russia and Ukraine, how has this affected on robot? And if not specifically on robot, what are the more general impacts for the robotics or automation market, if any? Yeah, you can say that uh, if we if we talk about the uh, direct impact. It has a direct impact for us in the Central uh, Eastern Europe, yeah. where a lot of projects are now on hold. People yeah. are nervous. Mm-hmm. Uh, it has a, a negative impact for us also in uh, in Germany and some other. I, w- I would say within the automotive industry, because mm-hmm. a lot of the uh, big automotive European automotive companies they get a lot of their parts from Ukraine. Okay. So these factories are now either working uh, on reduced time or being temporarily closed. So there are a lot of projects are delayed, not mm-hmm. only in the actual automotive factories, but also tier one, two, three, four, and so forth. Okay. So there we have negative impact. On a positive impact, what I expect is that okay, Western Europe is lacking. 750,000 to maybe 1 million people in the workforce because okay. they are now occupied elsewhere or unable, or unable to go from Ukraine to to Europe and do what they what they normally do. So we have a workforce shortage also as a consequence of the of the war. Okay. And that means that the people they want still to want to maintain the same say output in their factories, they will have to automate more. Okay. So we have things pulling in both directions. Right now, it's a negative impact, but medium, long term, I think this will. Uh, the, 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 you can say the global mega trend is, is yeah. still in our favor. Okay. So during the recent partner event last week, there was one example of on robot technology being used in the surgical room or mm-hmm. potentially in the surgical room to help doctors improve their efficiency as well as decrease maybe the potential risk from losing tools because of dropping them or using the wrong ones overall because mm-hmm. I've heard of many cases where the doctors actually forget the tools inside the patient. So the more well-funded hospitals will obviously have more budget when it comes to spending on such automated technology which brings up the problem of unequal access to quality healthcare and stuff like that. So has OnRobot thought about accessibility and equity and will there ever come a point where your products will be expensive and out of the realm of current healthcare systems? I don't think I, I don't think first of all we will not uh, differentiate the so so pricing or availability all everybody will have equal access to the product but of course they will also have to pay equal prices. Mm-hmm. I don't think it's the on-robot product and the pricing of the on-robot product that makes a difference for for the different uh, hospitals or different parts of the of the world. It's the it's the complete solution, and there we still play a play a very small, a very small part. And I don't think no matter what we do, that will not really influence mm-hmm. that uh, that accessibility for for everybody. Okay. 
So as a growing high schooler, what are some of the best advice that you can provide to me in maybe the next five minutes? Be curious. Continue to, uh, to ask questions. Uh, do what you, what, you, what, you like, what you like to do and then basically just believe in yourself. Push, push, push it uh, if there's something you want to do. Mm-hmm. Uh, close your ears and feel say no. Yeah. <laughs> So um, some further advice that I would request from you is, so um, in the summer of 2020, I actually got the opportunity to be part of a small incubator program mm-hmm. where we got to start our own company. Yes. And in there, I started a company called Comet Drones. Okay. And we've been shipping orders for some time now. It's a very, very small company. Yes. But essentially, when you think about drones, you don't really, when you think about it, it's like DJI, which take like Mavic or photos, but you never think about how to actually build it. And for high schoolers, when you maybe first try to fly your drone, you hit the wall and it breaks. But the high schoolers never really get to understand how exactly the drone flies, why it works and stuff Mm -hmm. like that. So the problem that I wanted to address was there's no clear instruction on how to build a drone, how to fly a drone. So within our kit, everything is plug in. So mm-hmm. you don't have to worry about soldering, which is something that kids obviously don't have access to. Yeah. So as a part of that, high schoolers, many of them have ideas to start businesses. So what would you say is the first step to making sure that they can create a successful business or in the long term? Or what is that first step that they can take? Because as high schoolers, we observe the world around us and we see a lot of problems. We don't exactly know how to address them because we see very huge problems and we want to address we obviously can't address that global warming, but how can we take these large problems and as high schoolers have an impact on the world? Yeah, I think the, the most important, whether you are high school or anyone else who wants to start a business, you need to understand your customer and you need to understand how you create value for your customer. If you understand that and if you can see that there is a clear value proposition or value creation, then I think then it's a question of sort of moving ahead, moving mm-hmm. forward. If you don't see that, uh, then it's then it's a little bit more difficult. Developing something because you think it's cool, but not knowing if there uh, is someone who that it will actually help. I, I don't I don't think that is the right way to mm-hmm. start a, to start a business. Um, and when you do it, uh, I would say if you do it as a high schooler, you 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 go relatively slow in, in in the sense that you don't go out and get a lot of loans and stuff like that yeah. right? you you get some funding from your from your parents or from your family and, yeah. and, and so on maybe a little bit of crowdfunding if you have a really good uh, really good idea but then you then you build something and you get some experience running the business because running a business is a lot more than developing a product and and selling it there's yeah once you have your own business okay there's a little bit okay. Where do I get the parts? Uh, mm-hmm. Where do I? How? What do I do with my tax return? I mean, there are there are so many things that you can learn there, but it's a good way to learn because then you are prepared when uh, when you graduate and then you sort yeah. of are, are ready for for your first real job later on, mm-hmm. or just take the business and and grow it. Okay, thank you. And to end it off, who is Enrico Krog Iverson? Can you please explain in just three words who you are? three words that's not much but um, who am I I'm uh, I'm a person who uh, who likes to uh, learn I'm a person who likes to uh, to change uh, things I don't like just you know this is how we used to do it I don't like that attitude uh, I'm a person with a with a global uh, outlook uh, and I'm a person who uh, yeah, who likes to be successful with what I do Okay, thank you so much for your time. Absolutely. <laughs> That's our show for today. Now roll the credits. High School Not So Much a Musical is hosted by Ayush Agarwal, Nitin Jaladanki, and Rishi Sinha. Narration by Samhit Padala. Music from Louis Luang Relaxation Cafe, Tune Pocket, and Infraction. If you like the show, please recommend it to your friends and family. Thank you so much for listening, and we'll see you next time.